warriors bodied <sighs> fucking warriors. your trailblazers game after game after game after game 17 point lead get the hell out of here 18 point lead get the hell out of here Dame Lillard hurt ribs we don't even give a damn I didn't want to hear like, it. if I didn't give Joel Embiid I know the time to and Paul George but here's the thing fuck it no KD no Iggy don't matter get out of here bro what happened to Paul every game Every game, second half, they just... It's like they're waiting for the Warriors to take the game over and win. Yeah, they didn't exactly. believe they could close it's it like out. They show up for the first <laughs> half, and then it's kind of like, oh, okay. Well, okay, we, now we know Steph Curry's shooting, so fuck it. Steph, yeah, <laughs> Steph, Steph's Play got Tom, all hot. Clay Thompson's in everything, fuck it. Oh, my God. Let, just let them keep shooting. The thing is, they took 18 three-pointers in the fourth fucking quarter last game. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Portland. Like, you, why are you trying to outshoot the Warriors? That's the worst strategy. That's like, okay, let me point out your strength and let me just attack the strength and just ignore the weaknesses of the Warriors. Like, it makes no sense. How do you come into a fucking series with your strategy to outshoot the yeah. fucking Warriors? We've, talk, so we've talked about this before. Where the, the NBA, I have a problem with it in terms of when teams are down, it almost becomes really boring basketball because all they think is, oh, I'm down nine points, let me chuck up three three-pointers and try and get it back right away. It makes no sense. But, it, but it's really a dumb tactic because you have better odds of hitting a two-pointer close to the net than a three-point shot. And I'm sorry, but <laughs> the shots that Dame Lillard and fucking McCollum take, they're not good shots. Those no. are terrible, terrible shots. You're not open. You have a defender right in your fucking face. He <laughs> knows you're going to pull up for the shot because you can't do anything else. It's it's just stupid to now, me. Now, I will say, Dame Lillard actually played pretty good in the last game. He had 28 and 12 assists. 11 they, of 24. That was, that was given to him, man. Yeah. Most they had that game in the bag. They, they didn't care the first half. <laughs> McCollum, great 26 points. But both of them sucked in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Again, because they just keep <laughs> but tossing up three after three it, after three. It's something we've talked about where the box score is very misleading. If I tell you that Lillard gets 28, McCollum 26, and Miles fucking Leonard contributes 30 points on 12 of 16 <laughs> shooting, <laughs> you think, okay... They got it to 3-1. They took one game from the Warriors. Yeah. Congrats. Not a nope. chance. Nope. Not a bloody chance. It It's Not atrocious the way. the way Portland just gives up. And don't tell me nothing. Oh, went to OT or whatever. Listen, Golden State could end it early if they wanted this to. Was their, this was their last chance. This was like the last. It was over before. And nobody's come back from 3-0 in NBA history. No, no. But I mean like this playoff run for the Portland Trail. I feel like now it's time. You gotta break up that so duel. Where do they go from here? Who break, do you trade? Break up that duel. Little McCollum. I'm. I'm you gotta get McCollum out of there. I'm sorry, but when you're not providing offensively, you you just fucking hide away for the rest of the game. You know, for the like, even the for the first series against OKC, you mm-hmm. he, he didn't have much to contribute offensively. So you, you didn't even hear about him. I didn't know if he was fucking playing some of the games. Fucking Lillard, at least when he can't contribute offensively, he can get you rebounds for a point guard, which is really important. Better playmaker, too. He can get you, yeah, he's a way better playmaker. He gets you assists. He moves the ball around. He makes guys look better and play better. So you gotta, I don't know, I feel you can't, you're stupid to give up Lillard. And like McCollum, he's a great player, but I just feel like that duo is just not working. It's not. What interests me is NBA watches each other, right? Yeah. You see the two guard system where, where, so. your, where your best players are yep. point guard and shooting guard. You saw the Raptors can only go so far because you got to get a tougher presence inside who can do different yeah. things. Exactly. You need you need an impact forward, right? You look at Washington Wizards, same thing. Bradley Beal, John Wall can't do nothing. And then Portland, Lillard McCollum. It's your first time you got the conference finals. When push comes to shove, you're not good enough. Why does everybody think their point guards and shooting guards can do what Steph and Clay do? It's the only I team just say, I blame in the Steph and it's the only Clay. team in the history of the NBA where your top two players, your point guard, shooting guard, and and they're phenomenal. It doesn't work. It's a broken formula. No. Stop trying to use it, Ge- NBA general managers. Just stop. You're wasting your team's years and resources, players' primes, money. Y- you're dumb. Y- you're not gonna have a chance to get the two best shooters and. In- NBA history. Well, it's like that's the only time it works. What you think? Have you ever seen a player that's undersized dominate the NBA in the playoffs? Besides, perhaps Steph Curry, and even Steph Curry in the playoffs is up and down, right? Yep. Now he's been playing a lot better since KD's gone out. Okay. Your point guard and your shooting guard are usually your two smallest guys in the team. Why do you think that's gonna win playoff games? Why? 
because again they <laughs> think the the league has moved to a whole three point shooting team like league. So now they're like, oh, let me just work on my see, one and two, and then they can just start tossing up see, threes. That's not. I still don't understand that because do you know who took the second most two point field goal attempts in the league this year? Who? Golden State Warriors. Hmm? I, well, yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, <laughs> they're the best. Yeah, second best <laughs> mid range. I heard that. That's insane. Like, are you kidding? Watch the damn games. Okay, especially with KD now, they don't take as many threes, and they, they took a whole lot more twos. They get a lot more backdoor cuts, a lot of layups, a lot of fast break dunks, and, and two-on-ones. They're not just a three-point shooting team. So why does everybody think to beat them or to even just win in this league? I got to chuck out-shoot up threes. Them. How did how did LeBron beat them? That uh, team was just was, <laughs> What's the one team that was able to beat Golden State in the postseason? They were not shooting It only threes. happened once. It was fucking Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> And that was and no dog, one learns. From that was that physicality going inside, exactly. bodying them in the paint, making it a fucking slow game, not just fucking three point of three point of three points just back and forth. It's not but, how you're gonna beat. What them. people don't realize is, so you're going fast break, Little McCollum or anybody, you're pulling up that deep three. Yeah. The rebound is now coming out further. Exactly. Your your team hasn't caught up with you. You're pulling up that fast break three. Now Golden State is back there. They're going on the fast break because you give them that long rebound. And if you guys have gone forward, well, now it's it's easy three-on-one for Golden State mm-hmm. or any team, right? The further shots lead to further rebounds. And if your team isn't set up to get back on transition defense, you're actually hurting yourself even more because you missed your shot and gave the other team an easy bucket. And again, you're undersized. And you're missing your freaking starting center. You don't have anyone to clean up your terrible three points. So who, uh, like, what, what's, what's how the did How did Ennis Cantor, Mr. Not Eating Food, do in the, in you the final game? <laughs> I have no idea how he did in the final game. I think he did decent. He did decent this whole postseason. He did really good for yeah, what he, he was needed for. Uh, but again, he, he, he's why, not he only played the, 13 minutes. I don't under. He's not whatever the rebounding beast that yeah. they need, especially with the amount that of threes Nurkic that they is. take. Yeah, but uh, they just re-signed Brian Stotts. I think his name, the coach. Yeah, is it Scotts or Stotts? I think it's Stotts. I thought it was Scotts. Scotts. All right, Brian Scotts has been re-signed. He's going to stay there. I don't think coaching was the issue. I think it's a personnel problem. And I really don't have nothing against Lillard and McCollum. I think it's just you got to make the decision that Masai Ujiri did. Yeah. Even though it's... You have to. You you just got to change something. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Teams figured out Portland, I feel like. Yeah. It's the same... They sweep last year. They got sweeped this year. The same mentality as when uh, Boogie Cousins got traded to Pelicans. I said, I don't like it. You got two great players, but... Who's going to feed them the ball when you have your power forward in your center that your best players? Somebody's got to play make for them. And it's similar <clears throat> towards you can't have your two guards better because you got to be able to go inside. And you got to be able to bridge that gap in your whole lineup. Yeah. You can't just be heavy on one section of your lineup. you got to have somebody that in the middle that can bring everything together. Portland doesn't have that. You, you need a small forward or a power forward to help them out. I don't know who, who they're going to get. I don't know really what that market. Do free agents really want to go to Portland? Yeah. Probably not a whole lot. Unless there's the enticement of Damian Lillard. So what I suggest for them, Portland GM, I don't know who you are, but listen up. Trade McCollum. Get a couple first round picks. Flip that for somebody nice. You can trade McCollum nice. for a big piece. Big piece. I don't know. <laughs> Who's going to trade a player, a big player for McCollum though? A team that needs a guard that's got a big forward? Can you think like Boston? Oh. Boston would trade Gordon Hayward, but I don't want. Go- I don't think they want Gordon Hayward. Bring AD over to Portland. Pelicans can use him. That's interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> hey, they if, don't want to do deals with Lakers and these yeah. other teams. If you could, if you compare McCollum, a guard again, we're talking about you need the difference for differentiation. Yeah. Now it works. The Raptors better because you got Kawhi with a small forward, Lowry point guard. If you get your shooting guard, and then you have Zion as your power forward. Drew Holiday as your point guard. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's, that's that's got the makings. That's a team that can but make a deep run. Draft picks got to go that way too. Portland's going to have a, Portland's going to have a crappy draft pick. So again, the Pelicans going to have to decide. Would you rather have the third overall pick in RJ Barrett from the Knicks? Or would you rather have CJ McCollum and a terrible first round pick I also wanted to say, yo, you were <laughs> spot on with that prediction, eh? Why? Ever since you said that everywhere I know. on my timeline, that's all I'm seeing. The whole Been freaking, seeing it. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's... For me, that's what I would do. I want my team to grow together, kind of yeah. like the Leafs did, and then you then add your veterans mm-hmm. as you need, right? There's no need to to get Kuzma and Ingram and those guys. I'm telling you, 
I don't I don't buy that Ingram's healthy even if he is his blood clots can always come and back. And again, they're not fucking I feel like they're not there to win a championship. They're there because they enjoy playing basketball. Did you and see they're happy that they're in the league? So, did you like, see the clip of um the HBO barbershop whatever LeBron James show yeah. when he was talking about how he found out that uh, Magic had stepped down? No. So, whatever, he's just talking he was on the massage table mm. and a uh, trainer comes in and says Magic just stepped down. LeBron says, "Get the F out of here." And he finds out. He goes to the locker room. Tells the guys. And then Lonzo's talking about it. He's like, yeah, it's totally different for me and Brown, though. Because Brown was like, yo, I came because this guy. And this, that. He's like, I was thinking, I'm like, damn, man, that shit crazy. And the thing's like, I'm like, yo, Kuz, what we doing tonight, bro? You see that mentality? Your president just stepped down. And he said, he said he's laughing about it. Two seconds later, he's like, yo, Kuz, what we doing in L.A. tonight? Where are we, what, exactly. where are we tearing it up? What ass he's trying to smack? Like <laughs> This is why they were so hurt with LeBron. With, not, sorry, not LeBron. Magic and them trying to trade them. Yeah. Because... They love being in the NBA. They love playing basketball, and they most importantly, they love being in LA. Yeah. So, d- do we want to move on to the Magic, or you have anything else left with Warriors? <sighs> okay. I'll close off with this: tremendous for them going to five straight NBA Finals. And again, Curry, I'm sorry if I've ever <laughs> talked shit about you or said underrated F-F. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Played you believe he's a top five player now, buddy? Hmm? You believe he's a top five player now? Arguably, could better be top than James three. Harden. Tell you that much. Hmm? He's top three. Well, for, he, there's no argument you can really make saying James Harden's a better player. No, not anymore. Not a better shooter. Not a better playmaker. Not. I'll ask better you. I'll ask team. you one question before we move on from the Warriors. This time, change of scenery. NBA Finals. They're gonna be starting on the road, mm-hmm. either in Toronto or Milwaukee. You think that's a big deal or no deal? <laughs> no deal. No deal. <laughs> Me too. Not for Warriors. <laughs> I Again. will. I will say it's a big team for. It's a big deal. For Toronto or Milwaukee to be able to start at home and maybe scrape out a win as opposed to starting an Oracle where you know you're going to come home down 2-0. Yeah. So, I think it is a big deal for the Raptors Milwaukee. Doesn't mean shit to the Warriors. It's bigger for the uh, Raptors just because of their whole, like we were talking about earlier, the yeah. energy in that arena. Yeah. It could be big for them for the first two games, but 